tell you a story about a man who would be king, but chose to lead us instead. A man of grace, courage, and unmovable moral fortitude. A tribute to A. Zachary Yamba for 25 years of exceptional leadership. The first impression of Dr. Yamba is when I met him, I was working as an office temp in the personnel department at the college on Clinton Street. He came in to fill out his application for employment. He was uh, stood out because it was a summer day, but he came in in a corduroy suit. Uh, he clearly was very bright. He was a good teacher um, and someone who always commanded respect. I mean, when Zachary talked, people always listened. When I first saw him, I thought, this man is regal. He had a presence about him that, um, that just, you know, you just felt comfortable in his presence, but you knew that he was strong and that there was a sense of real integrity and pride. He was a very quiet, personal person, but, but with a sense of humor. It was this underlying sense of humor that you didn't see very often, but every so often it would just kind of pop up unexpectedly and you kind of look at him and think, did he say that? I remember very clearly the first time I met him. He had come to this country um, at the request of um, Reverend Akonlu, who was a friend of ours, and he came here on full scholarship to Seton Hall and we had a house close enough so that shortly after checking in, he came over to visit us. We were delighted to meet him and astounded at how special he was. Zachary was a stellar scholar and athlete, graduating with honors from Seton Hall University and being inducted into the Athletic Hall of Fame. Upon graduation, he aspired to a career in education, a career that became all the more compelling because of the increase in social unrest in the neighboring city of Newark. There's not an American city that had a ride more infamous than that of Newark's. Uh, five days of violence, neighborhoods of long standing were nearly destroyed. The, the riots created this, this, this deep cleavage in the community. Due to the riots, he felt a moral obligation to teach in Newark, and so he became one of the first 90 faculty members to join a new community college when it opened in 1968. The striking thing about him um, is that he's a West African, and up to that time, uh, I had not crossed the path of West Africans. There is a, a dignity in the West African people. There is a uh, a fluency of language and there's this very strong sense of propriety um, and to meet when I was such a young man in those days a West African while I was beginning an academic career in the middle of this contested ground called Newark New Jersey who was one of the most memorable encounters of my life at that time and now Dr. Yamba's talents did not go unrecognized and he was appointed Dean of Faculty in 1974 Zach and I both started off as deans at about the same time, both of us from the British Commonwealth, he from West Africa, I was from Canada, and we looked at this American educational system and we said, we've got to be able to do better. And since that time, it's been a unique and very productive partnership between us trying to do just that. When Zach first became dean of academic affairs, I was sitting in the audience listening to his opening address to the faculty and a senior faculty member next to me said, well, that's what a dean should be. And I'll never forget his department chair meetings, which almost became events because each chair had a chance to express himself or herself. And it was like a, a forum of real academic ideas. As dean and as head of the college's administrative unit, he was sharply critical of college operations. In the early board meetings, there was a young man in the audience who made a habit of coming to every meeting, standing up and castigating the board and the college for its transgressions. And uh, he was actually very tough on us. Uh, but I became very fond of him nonetheless because it occurred to me sitting and listening to him that unless I was mistaken, he was absolutely correct in his criticism. 
I think the board's reaction to Zach at that time was they just wished that he would go away. Uh, but they found out that wouldn't be the case. The college had been experiencing significant difficulties, desperately searching for a safe haven in a tumultuous storm. His was the voice that rose above all others. There are several people that were interested in becoming president of Essex County College. Um, there was a consensus focus group, if you will, who came together to talk to uh, those individuals that were interested. And uh, the, the consensus of that group was that these individuals really could not be the ones that would move forward to uh, save the institution. And in the middle of that meeting, someone said, what about Dean Yamba? Uh, the biggest argument Zach and I ever had was over his assuming the presidency. He was adamantly opposed to it. He felt that it was uh, too uh, self-seeking and it wasn't the thing for him to do. It was selfish. And uh, we fought for a long time and uh, eventually came down to a matter of history. I pointed out that Washington became president after being a general and uh, so did Nkrumah, so did Moses and so did almost any other leader of an important country and it was his obligation to take the reins and this is what he should be doing and he finally relented. He made the statement, I will not campaign for the position, I will not apply for the position, I will not fight for the position, but if the institution comes together as a whole and asks me to take this position, that will be the only way I can do it because the college will never be able to survive an internal fight for the presidency. After being named interim president, he quickly went to work, attacking the issues that plagued the college for years, political patronage, financial instability, and poor academic standards. The major issue with the accrediting association was, quote, political interference in the operation of the college, unquote. The president would walk down the hall and see somebody he'd never seen before and say to his assistant, who's that? Oh, that's the new head of the science department. It was just that blatant. When the politics get into the institution, he tells them up front, this is not that type of institution. I will work with everybody. I'm one of the few people that remembered the college's dire financial straits. Under Zach's leadership, we developed stringent new budget practices. Fiscal integrity has always been paramount. In the midst of the accreditation process, the college began the search for its new president. There was a process that the, the uh, search committee had set up, and, and that process was that the person who would be the, pres the interim president could not be a candidate for president. Um, I was a stickler at that time and didn't realize that some rules could be broken. He had just been invited by his native country in Africa to come back there to be the chief educator where he was from. And now he's got this dilemma. Should I go home where I will be the head, the leading educator in the country? Should I stay here in this place that boils up every six months and you never know how long you're going to be the president and so on? After a few uh, weeks, I believe, or probably a few days maybe, um, it, it came to me that Zach's the guy. We have to have Zach. Under Dr. Yamba's leadership, the college was granted an unprecedented 10-year accreditation. This just shortly after being named the fifth president of Essex County College. Once president, Dr. Yamba continued to raise the academic standards of the institution. While agreeing that every student had a right to a college education, he was adamant that students should earn the right to graduate. His push for open dialogue on open access created a firestorm. The whole issue uh, was misinterpreted by many in the community as denying uh, the students, and that was minority students, uh, a right to a college education. Zach took a lot of grief. He was accused of being a racist, which might strike us all as a little unusual. Uh, but he, he stayed he stayed with his principles, and that, that was an extraordinary performance on his part, and I was very proud of him to see that. Never a stranger to the college, it was not long before political interference once again reared its ugly head. He had a board president, Clara Dasher, who probably was the finest woman you could find and with a capital I was just chock full of integrity and honesty and they made a great team. And there was a time in the history of this college 
when someone, uh, I'll leave the name out, uh, tried to break up that team and someone tried to step forward and assume responsibility as not only leader of the board but controller of this institution um, and that person found out very quickly that this institution rallied together to beat him down and that was that was quite a victory out of the conflict and controversy rose an edifice dedicated to academic excellence growing from Clinton Street to the megastructure the house that Zach built honored its past as well as its present Clara Dasher has always been an inspiration to all of us on campus, so when Dr. Yamba was able to realize the dream of a student center, there was only one person to name it after, and that was Clara Dasher. A landmark of unprecedented stability and growth, the campus has experienced significant physical expansion. The purchase of the West Essex campus. We were very fortunate when Essex County College decided to move to West Colville in the West Essex area and establish the West Essex campus. The gymnasium. Child Development Center, the expansion of the Birch Auditorium to the Mary Birch Theater, the Center for Technology, the Police Academy. The college was not only brick and mortar, but the center of community activity, public school and corporate partnerships. One of the things that I guess I'm most impressed about uh, Zach Yamba is his easy way, his easy style, but always after you leave the room, you've accomplished the mission. His wisdom and leadership has really helped us see and identify needs in the community that we would not have seen without his leadership. I try to model my public service career based on Zach's. The ECC of today is an impressive place, brimming with students 11,000 strong. Academic programs are as diverse as its students. Allied health programs that are second to none. Cutting edge technology, quality programs in the humanities, business and social sciences. We've talked uh, over beers and we've talked in private and I know that uh, he wants this college to be the best that it can be and he takes considerable pride in graduates that go on to careers and opportunities that they never would have had and would have uh, Essex County College. We went from around 400 to well over 800 graduates, doubling the number, which was an extraordinary feat, yet it's still not enough and Dr. Yamba wants more. From the start, Zach was deeply committed to academic excellence, and he saw in the transferability of credits and degrees a way to validate and verify the excellence that he was building at Essex County College. We worked very closely together to make sure that Essex degrees and Essex courses were transferable, and in so doing, Zach also did a great deal for teaching at Rutgers, because Rutgers professors needed to learn, and they did learn, from Essex professors how to teach the student population that we shared. Now we have come to the end of this story, the story of a son of Ghana, whose vision of what could be at Essex has become a reality. He was the catalyst and inspiration for a quarter century of extraordinary achievement that today defines Essex County College. Indeed, his singular leadership has forever changed its destiny. The history of Essex County College uh, is really the history of Essex County College's president, uh, Zachary Yamba. Zach's leadership has been characterized by 25 years of resolute courage, emotional discipline, and a seeming immunity to the mischiefs of those who would work to subvert the mission of this great institution. He had the capacity to articulate the vision of the institution. In fact, he was the embodiment of it. I think that it could be argued that Zach Yamba is some kind of diplomat, uh, a leader who brings talented people together and makes things happen. I've had an opportunity to see various sides of him, and he is definitely not averse to battles. I think those that remember him in his early years saw him as a warrior for the college, and that's good. We've known one another now for uh, 44 years, and you are simply one of the most remarkable human beings I've ever met.